Okay, I would make sure you print both of these for the exam. I did make this video last night, but unfortunately um, my sound quality was really bad and it's not usable. So hopefully the sound better, sound quality on this one's a little bit better. I know it sometimes runs through my computer mic, sometimes it runs through my dot cam mic, and so it's always hard to tell. All right, so let's do the ones I skipped, okay? Um, so on this one, um, remember when Roman numerals are not a place value system, um, you have to build each number. And shoot, I need a better writing utensil. All right. All right, so, and this is an 80, boy, and this is a four. All right, so I, you can't, again, they don't have a thousands place this, 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 you just build these. And remember when you build them, four in a row is not allowed. So you can't have 40, you can't have 60 that way. So the way you do it is add or subtract. So if you want 40, you take 50 and you wanna subtract 10. So you actually have to put the little number in front of the big number to indicate subtraction. So that would be XL. Okay, because that's 50 and 10. Um, if you want 60, you want 50 and adding 10, so you put it after. So I always remember after, you know, if you put it after, you add. Okay, that's always kind of what I do. All right, and so that would be that order. So again, four would be five minus one, I would do this. Okay, and sometimes there's more than one way, like maybe to get, oh, I don't know, like a number like 70, you maybe could do 50 and add 10 twice, or maybe you could add, take 100 and subtract three X's. Um, sometimes there's more than one legal way. Um, just remember, you can only add and subtract within a place value. So you can't take one and subtract it from a thousand, totally legal, but you can add or subtract these within 10, add and subtract these within a place value. So tens to hundreds, add or subtract within a place value here. So all of that is legal within a place value. All right, so let's look at these. So 1,000 is M, so here's my M. 900, um, I can't do nine of the same shape, so I'm gonna do, um, let's see, I might try to do D and add 100, 100, 100. The problem is that's four in a row, and again, remember, illegal, you can only get three. So that means I'm gonna have to subtract from 1,000. So I'm gonna put an M, which is 1,000, and again, I, it's legal to subtract one place value between, so I'm gonna subtract 100. After would add, I want to subtract, so I'm going to put it there. 80, um, I could do 50, and then 60, 70, 80, that's legal. So I'm going to do a 50, and I'm going to add three tens after. 80 is one of those where you could subtract from 100, too. So two ways of doing that. And then 4 is a 5. I don't want to add, I want to subtract. So I'm going to do that. Again, not a place value system. Positional, the order matters, but it's not like there's a thousands place or anything like that. All right, same thing here. I'm going to build the number. Um, at a time. So 600, again, you can't do six 100s, illegal, so I'm going to do a 500, and I want to add, so I want a 500 plus 100, so my 500 is a D, and I want to add 100, so I'm going to put a C behind it. 50 is a symbol, that's an L, and then 4, again, is a 5 minus 1, so a V, but I don't want to add it, I want to subtract it, so I'm going to put it there. All right, here, these are a little tricky, but what I do is I kind of usually look at the beginning and the end, and then I kind of go in the middle. So three M's would be 3,000. So I know this is a four digit number to us. Um, it looks like I have two at the end, so I'm gonna do that. And then in the middle, I have XL. So what is XL? Well, L is 50 and X is 10. So XL, 50 and 10. The smaller is in front, it's not behind, so I don't add, so I subtract. So that's gonna be a 40. Um, notice they don't have a zero, um, but because you know that's 40, you know that there's none of these. So that's kind of how you do that. All right, let's look at this guy. Um, if I look at this, I have DC. It looks like maybe I have that at the end. All right, so DC. D is a 500 and C is that. So I have DC, which is a 500 with 100 behind it. So if it's after you add, so that looks like it's 600. So that means this is a three digit number. Um, at the end, it looks like I have five, six, seven, eight. So that's good. So I just gotta figure out in the middle and I have three of those, which is 30. All right, um, we already did the other ones, conversions. Remember, um, you have this on your cheat sheet so that you can divide and subtract, divide and subtract to regroup. All right, and then remember, there's one like this on the test where if you want to, um, you know, these type, if you want to, uh, oh, undo it, you would, you know, multiply the number by the place value, number by place value, number by place value, and do that one, okay? 
Um, so, and I can't remember if I put this on the last video. I can't remember where I ended up, but we'll just keep going here. Okay, I couldn't remember what we had done, and it looks like we kind of stopped. So I'm going to pick up there. So again, remember to go back to base 10 or to unconvert. It can't be easy. Um, so this is 7, and this is what? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And again, it's a hand is worth 5, and those are like fingers. But again, you have those on that chart. So that's why you want to print that for the exam. All right. And um, again, theirs are not worth like our place space. So up here, these aren't worth ones and tens and hundreds. These are worth ones, sixties, and thirty-six hundred. So their place value in Mayan, these are worth one, twenty to the zero power, and these are worth twenty. And then remember, it goes three sixty and seven thousand two hundred. So again, I would put those charts on your cheat sheet. So then what you have to do is this would be worth 140 to them. This would be worth nine and you need to add those up. So that would be 149. Okay. And I think the one I put on the test is more like this one, which is at the end of the last video. All right. Egyptian, again, they just drew hieroglyphics. They just had pictures. All right. So um, four frogs, not going to be pretty, but we're going to draw four. Oh boy. They're getting worse as we go. Four frogs. I'll give them a leg here. All right. I don't know. That one kind of looks like a bird, but whatever. So I have four frogs, zero thousands. Um, two of those are ten thousands. I mean, two of those. So these are lotus flowers. Kind of look like Pac-Man or stick. Two of those, three hundred. Those are either coiled ropes or coiled snakes, depending on what source you look at. Four is four of the heel bones. So one, two, three, four. And five of probably just a stick. One, two, three, four. Five. And again, remember, order doesn't even matter on that one. You can draw the picture however you want. Um, tri traditional Chinese I love because basically what they do is they take a number like 3,486 and they write, they just write it in symbols. So they'll write 3,400, eight tens, and six, they don't write ones. But it's kind of like just reading, really. All right, so this guy is a two. And then they're going to put the place value to next. So if you look for the little seven guy, it's a thousand. All right. So then you look for the T, that's a seven. And then the thing that kind of looks like a dynamite thing, like in a movie, old fashioned, that's a hundred. All right. Where am I at? And then we have the T looking guy again, which is a seven. And then kind of the plus or the cross is a 10. And then our singles are last, which kind of looks like a person without a head, like a stick person, is six. And so you literally read it. This is 2,000, okay, great, 700, seven tens, and six, they just are the ones. And so it's kind of like the way we speak it, they write it, which is kind of cool. Um, do you think teachers should allow to teach Hindu Arabic numbers? I sure hope so, because that's our base 10 system. Um, this, it comes from the Middle East. It's amazing. The whole world uses it now, but that's where it originated. Brilliant. So thankful we're in base 10. It makes life so much easier. So yes, we should teach that. And then what are the first counting numbers in three? Um, so remember, if you're in base three, they regroup at three, which is kind of weird. So you'd have zero, one, two. But when they hit at three, they would regroup them. So that's actually a 10 to them. And then you'd hit 11, 12. And then at 13... So here you have a regrouping. Um, you would have to regroup again. So that would jump to 20 and then 21, 22. And 23 is kind of weird because you'd have two regroupings because they group by sets of three. And then you'd have three singles. Well, then you'd group these. But then again, in base three, anytime you hit three, you regroup. So they would actually regroup again. And so that is actually going to jump. So 23, this is going to regroup and make it 30, but that's going to regroup into actually 100. And we usually put a little subscript to indicate that, oopsie, sorry, that we're counting in base three, that we regroup any time we hit three, which is kind of fun. All right, um, so that's that. All right, I also posted a logic one and um, some of that stuff. So on this one, I would print this from the test. Um, Negating something easy like it's, you know, it's sunny outside, it's not sunny outside. It's raining, it's not raining. Those are easy. But if I say all, you know, all teachers are amazing, the negation is not none are amazing. Because is there okay, those would both probably be false. I hate to say it. So all professors are amazing, mm, probably not. None are amazing, yeah, I've had some amazing ones. So remember with statements, if one is true, the other has to be false. 
So if you're going to negate like all professors are amazing, you have to go to some professors are not amazing because then that would be the true one. This would be the false one. So sometimes extremes are hard to negate. Print out the chart. All right, so let's look at it. Um, some people drink milk. Okay, so some people drink milk would go to no people drink milk. And remember, one of these should be true, the other is false. So let's see. Some people drink milk is true. No people, that's false, right? We know people that drink milk. Um, some dogs do not have fleas. Okay, right here. Some dogs do not have fleas. The negation would be all dogs have fleas. And again, one of them should be true, one is false. Um, hopefully we know that all dogs have fleas is a false statement. Some dogs do not have fleas, that is true. Hopefully most dogs, at least once I'm around. All right, let's skip. Um, no rabbits wear glasses. Okay, so no, none are here. No glasses, no wear glasses, some wear glasses. Okay, so some rabbits wear glasses. All right, um, I would assume no, I have not seen a rabbit wear glasses except in children's books. So I am guessing in real life, this is the true one and this is the false one, okay? Um, all pens use ink. Okay, so all, all pens use ink. Some pens do not. Don't forget that not in there. Um, to negate an all, you need a not. So this would be um, what? Some pens do not use ink would be the negation. So not just going to some, but you actually have to have the word not in there. All right, so again, this chart is awesome for negating alls and nuns and things like that. All right, what would this mean? Um, again, an A that looks like this. So this is your and. The other one is your or. Okay, so this is the coffee is Maxwell House or what? The coffee is hot. So the coffee is either Maxwell House brand or, brand or it's hot. This would be not Q. Okay, so not Q. The coffee is not hot and the coffee is strong. So I could kind of word that better like the coffee is strong and it's not hot. You know what I mean? Like I could make it sound a little bit better. Um, here's a true false statement. Now this one, you have P, Q, and R. So you're gonna have to have like the eight chart. You know, there's gonna be eight possibilities here of like true, 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 things like that. Um, but notice I just wanna know while Q and R um, represent false statements. Okay, so P is true. So P is gonna be true and then Q and R are false. So if you don't want to do the whole chart, you could actually just do those right there. That's all you need to know because I'm not asking you to make the whole chart. So what we could do is do not P, all right? And we're only testing if P is what true. So the opposite of true is that's going to be false. And then here I need to know not R first. So let's get not R. Not R is false. So that's going to go to true. And then we're going to do Q and not R. Okay, so where's Q? Q is there and not R is here. And that's an and because it looks like an A. All right, so um, and is hard to get a true because they both have to be true. So that guy's going to be false. Okay, so we did that. We've done that. Okay, now we have to do the whole thing overall. Not P and then Q, not R. Okay, so now we're combining. Uh, let's see, which ones? We're combining that one and the last one. And this is an or, does not look like an A. And to tell the truth on an or, only one of them has to be true. But notice they're both false, so this is false. So it says find the truth value of this while well, we know it's going to be false. I could make the chart for all eight, but I only want to know the answer when P is true and Q and R are false. So I don't really need to do all eight because that's the only row I care about. But you could. All right, sorry if there's a little wonky transition there. I um, had to edit a little bit. All right, let's look at this one. Again, it's only a four one. And what do I need to do? I need to know a not P. Now, do you see how this is outside the parentheses? So we're gonna have to do that first. So let me get not P for this part over here. So not P is the opposite of P. So P is true, true, false, false. So that's gonna go to what? False, false, true, true. Okay, so I did this guy. Now I need to do the parentheses, kind of like, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, like uh, order of operations. We have to do parentheses first. And again, this does not look like an A, so it's an or, so it's easier to tell the truth. And again, I'm looking at those two. So I told the truth both times, true. Told the truth once, it's true. Told the truth once, it's true. Lied both times, it's false. So again, you only need one true 
to get it to be true on an or, and that's not. All right, but then notice I did the inside. Now I need to do the negation of that. All right, so I'm gonna un I'm gonna do the negation of that. So true goes to false. True.